hey everyone, the name is Eric Dora, and something so fascinating that I discovered is that people have this assumption when they go into the MTI that an INFJ, for example, can't be athletic, an ENTP can't be good with people, and ESTP can't be good at intuition. Often all of this rests on one big misconception, and that is that skill is time. True it is, skill is not type. If you're good at something, that doesn't necessarily mean that it is who you are. True it is, you can develop yourself to be amazingly powerful in the use of your inferior functions. If you want to, you can become better at introverted sensing than an ISTJ. All you need to do is steadily practice using this function. Now, just because you can develop your inferior function does not mean that you should. We have this idea in our society that we should be good at everything. We should be so stress tolerant. We should be outgoing. We should be proactive. We need to be a doers. We can't sit still. We shouldn't be lazy. We should be creative and we should be optimistic. We should always see the positive in everything. And we should never ever feel bad. Truth is, when it comes to development, often the development of the inferior function is associated with dealing to, with a crisis. We, do, we develop these functions not because we find them fun or stimulating or energizing, but because we are overwhelmed by it. It's so much. We have demands from other people to do it. Other people are asking us to do it. There is a crisis, an issue we must respond to. We have work issues, something new that is like pulling us, forcing us to do it. And this is so different from how our normal functions are developed. The reason we tend to develop the first two functions first in our childhood is because usually our childhood is fun. We do things that are fun, we explore hobbies, we explore our passions, we try out new things, we are learning, we're engaging in things that fill us with a sense of richness, fill us with a sense of fun and joy. The reason we develop our inferior function is often purely from the perspective of what does work expect from me, what does my parents want from me, what does my school expect from me. How we look at our inferior function is similar to how we look at the sh a shore, a distraction, something forced on us. So the people with the strongest inferior functions are often the people that have been exposed to the strongest traumas in life, the people that have had the strictest parents, the strictest schooling the strictest tutoring, the strong, most difficult work environment. And often while I meet an ENFP that has developed to be extremely self-disciplined, extremely organized, extremely good with systems, at the same time as I feel impressed by this person, I also feel a little sad because I can understand the circumstances that grow this development. What gets an INFJ to pursue martial arts or combat-related sports? Well, because it provides a sense of relief from anxiety, from stress. What gets an INFJ to pursue martial arts or combat-related sports? Well, because it provides a sense of relief from anxiety, from stress. And that means that there are two different mentalities in our society, part of the archetypes that I've uh, measured in my personality tests. And that means that there are different archetypes in our society, depending on how we have developed our cognitive functions and which cognitive functions we have developed. Imagine that the hero archetype represents the normal development for an INFJ, the INFJ that has developed their core passion, their core hobby, the INFJ that has worked towards their passion or their true stimulation, their true sense of joy, their true path to uh, find peace, calm and existential bliss. Then imagine that the rival is the exact opposite of that. The INFJ that has acted purely to relieve stress and anxiety. The INFJ that has acted purely in a way that can deal with alter demands, expectations from school, from work, from other people. The hero acts on intrinsic motivations while the rival acts purely on extrinsic uh, rewards, things that like money, things like uh, salary, things like promotions. And even worse, after the rival INFJ or ENFP or ENTP for that matter, has acted purely often out of this negative fear, out of fear of not being able to pay rent, out of stress from work, not out of the sense of 
gratitude or gratification or pleasure. And while to some extent being able to do this when it is necessary reflects maturity, it might not reflect what we should aim towards in a longer term perspective. True it is people that act purely out of stress or out of anxiety are at risk of developing, for example, burnout or other issues. And so often it's important to find healthy stress, healthy levels of anxiety, levels that you can manage, things that you can manage. And if things feel unhealthy, things feel too much, you have to find a way to scale it down. You have to make sure that the challenges you face are enough to drive you towards a positive direction and enough to fill you with some sense of joy over what you do. If you act in a way that gives you no sense of joy or no sense of gratification, you'll be so stressed, you'll be so tense, you'll be acting like a person that feels no joy in what they do. And every so often our arrival state is our lash out state. When we feel that insurmountable level of anxiety, that insurmountable level of anxiety and stress, we just, we just uh, lash out. We begin to say things we wouldn't say normally. We begin to do things that aren't us. And that is also why I tend to say that the hero states better represents who we are. Because there are so many things we can do out of anxiety or in trauma. There are things people can do in war that they wouldn't do in the normal circumstances. And to some extent, I don't think that can be faulted to who they are. Because very few of us are ourselves in terms of a crisis. Very few of us are who we are when we are under stress or anxiety. You're not yourself when you're hungry, a lot of people say, and that's so true. But true it is, not everybody chooses to go into the rival state to deal with anxiety and stress. Other people can choose to just run away. The autopilot state or the zombie state often represents what we do to run away from obligations, stress and anxiety. Okay, so there are things we need to do. There are things that are important. Well, so often we are good at distracting ourselves from what is important. And our biggest distractions today are social media, our cell phones, our TV, mindless entertainment. And I understand that there are things in social media that can be really exciting, really rewarding, really challenging, stimulating intellectually. But ever so often it is not. Ever so often what we watch on TV is not fun, it's not interesting to us. And so it just puts us in this state of mind where we are just blank, zoned out, nothing at all. Ever so often we just stare up at the ceiling and we just let ourselves become numb. The zombie state represents our two lost functions in the eight cognitive function model. The things that are the least us, an INFJ acting like an ISTJ, an ENFP acting like an ESTP, an I ENFJ acting like an ESFJ. The zombie state represents our two least developed functions. For an INFJ, it represents ISTJ. For an ESTP, it represents an ENFP. For an INFP, it represents an ISTP. Often our conception of a zombie is that person. We imagine that ISTJ and then we see the ISTJ as the zombie. Or we imagine as an ENFP, we imagine we have this image of the zombie as an ESTP. This is a biased perspective, however. The ESTP is not a zombie in themselves, but they represent things that would be associated with being a zombie for us. An ENFP's idea of what being a zombie would be like would be to be like an ESTP. But for an ESTP, being an ESTP represents to act on your highest sense of awareness, to act on and to be highly aware of yourself and who you are and what decisions you make. And these perspectives are just so different because that's why our types are different. That's why ENFPs have the ENFP as their flow type and ISTJ as their stress type. Now there's one final and really interesting archetype out there that I want to discuss in this video. And that is the muse. We all have this idea in our head of the muse, what the muse would look like to us, what our ideal muse would be like. The muse can represent our sense of inspiration, 
but it also represents something that is slightly outside our comfort zone. If the INFJ ideally prefers to have and exercise some kind of mental self-control, the INFJ's idea of a muse is someone who thinks in a way that is chaotic, scattered, a little crazy in a way. And if the ISTJ's primary state is to be self-disciplined, then the ISTJ's idea of a muse is someone who acts purely out of gratification, who is always living in the present, who is always in 